at Le Chatelier principle. So I took nitrogen, hydrogen, and making ammonia. That's the forward reaction, right? So the forward reaction generates ammonia. After a while, a little more ammonia, they will colloid each other and do the reverse reaction to make nitrogen and hydrogen again. So this has to be a closed system in order to reach equilibrium. Open system, something is going to disappear, no equilibrium reached, right? The other thing, for this reaction, it's exothermic, 92 kilojoules are in the product side. Now, that way we can say delta H minima is on your product side and delta H maxima on your reactant side. These are the two little kids I put on the seesaw, if you remember. So the seesaw, that's the equilibrium. So you have these two driving forces against each other to reach the equilibrium. So at the equilibrium, you can use product over reactants concentrations and you can get the k equilibrium the value constant only for that temperature now so the k eq we write sometimes kc if you write the concentrations you write kp if you write the pressures of we want to visualize this way let's look at this graph um, concentrations versus time so hydrogen amount disappears slowly nitrogen amount disappears slowly and Ammonia start to appear. So that's how it should look like. So the in green it's ammonia NH3 actually not NH2 So so now it's when it, the concentrations are flattened out like after T1 the pink line After T1 time. So that means that's where the equilibrium achieved after T1 time So the system is at equilibrium. It's closed. It's at equilibrium forward rate is equal to backward rate before that, that's I call the little Q. So that means you're reaching, you're trying going forward, the little Q go forward to reach the equilibrium. Just remember that way. So I will show you in a, in a moment what that means, another way to understand. Now let's say I took some ammonia like that. So that means you injected out some ammonia and it lowered the amount right now this is i kind of call the spike downward or you took them out injected out right as a result what happens hydrogen amount goes down smoothly and nitrogen amount goes down immediately right um, smoothly and then they flatten out again so that means they reach the equilibrium so at t2 time we injected out uh, some ammonia and then as a result the two reactants were lowered to make the missing ammonia but all the flat lines for concentrations or rates either way they are at equilibrium now let's say another situation so we're going to go to the t3 at the t3 let's say we injected some hydrogen into the system and also same time simultaneously we injected nitrogen into the system so we had two synergies we pumped in. Now as a result what happens, ammonia production goes up very nicely. So this anytime the concentrations are goes up, going up at this T3 point, so that's called the big Q. I call it big Q. But there is a reason, so you can see that, right, uh, in a moment. Now let's, let's, let, let me explain little Q and the big Q and the KEQ right so it's a good way visualizing that way above graph now we know keq is product over reactants that's the reverse and forward rates are equal now if you somehow have a lot of products that's big p that causes big q mathematically and uh, then if you have a lot of reactants that will give you a little p and then that's a small q so the small small q has a lot of reactants so it go forward to bring the find the KEQ and lot of products goes reverse until it finds the KEQ. So the goal is to find the KEQ. Look at this way. Little Q goes forward, big Q goes backward until it finds the KEQ. Okay. Now we can also look at the what factors actually change. So the factors are heat, basically temperature and concentrations. The concentrations for a gas would be pressure or volume changes, right? But also remember in red I'm writing, if it is equimolar of reactants and products, the pressure changes and the volume changes don't matter. So equimolar, we call the equimolar reactants and products, 
the pressure or volume change doesn't say doesn't change anything right okay now we want to address this one based on the la chandelier okay let's let's change this on a little bit better um, let's say my heat exothermic that's 92 or heat uh, heat product and let's say we increase the heat or we make it hot so increase the heat first that's the effect and as a result to remove that extra heat and it reaction shift to the left as a result reactants are increased products are lowered that's how we explain one two three order right let's look at this example so any reaction reactant product this is exothermic heat uh, just like the ammonia reaction now first we lower the heat in this case now what happens it should the reaction should shift to the right to make the missing heat and therefore the products are increased as a result reactants are lowered that's the Le Chatelier principle okay let's take an endothermic heat plus reactants goes into products now if we take the heat out the reaction should shift to the left to make the missing heat so therefore as a result reactants are increased products are lowered that's another way you're explaining the Le Chatelier principle. It's called the LCP. It's basically, I say, uh, Mother Nature fights back, right? Uh, in, for the equilibrium system, any uh, physical strains applied. Now, so hydrogen iodine and goes into 2HI, two equimolar reactants and products. So that means pressure and volume don't change anything based on the Le Chatelier principle. Same thing happens for catalysts and the inert gases. Thank you.